unless you're not trying to make、um, any profit from a movie, you really have to understand genre. Do you decide on the genre before you come up with a movie idea? I do now, but I didn't used to do that. And and the reason why I do that now is、um, after Las Vegas Story. Part of the reason why it didn't get a distribution deal was because it was a drama, and it was really hard when you don't have like a star in in that movie.、Um, and that kind of failure made me quite or you know reassess like okay, what does this all mean? And I talked to a lot of distributors, and I started understanding more of the business side of things. And and now when I make a film, I'm very conscious of like what genre and what the audience is for this movie. And、um, yeah, because you know, if you're trying to make a living、um, in the movie business, like you really have to kind of have that in focus.、Um, whereas before, I was really, you know, much younger, and it was really just about making a movie and telling a story. But within the commercial world, you really, unless you're not trying to make、um, any profit from a movie, <laughs> you really have to understand genre, and and what requ- is the requirement of every genre. What are your favorite movie genres? Mm, I, I really like sci-fi movies,、um, but I also really like dramas. So, and, but when I was really young, I used to love horror movies. Now、um, I still like horror, but only like smart horror. You know, like something、um, like Get Out was pretty cool for me.、Um, but yeah, sci-fi definitely because I've always liked to see different worlds. That potentially could, you know, happen in our world.、Um, so that's why sci-fi is something that really draws me. With Bang Bang and then Las Vegas Story, it seems like you're drawn to sort of this crime underworld. That that you know maybe、um, there's there's a humanizing element to it. It's not all. I mean, I'm just just from the trailers that I've watched. So、uh, can you talk about that? Yeah. So the other genre that I really like is. Um, crime drama or just dark, <laughs> dark things.、Um, I've always been drawn to the underbelly of society, and I don't know. Th- there's something interesting about, or more interesting to me, about somebody who is like trying to get by, scraping by, and you know the things that this person would do to like make some money.、Um, And it's always that world. You never really see it that much, because I think I mean I think most people live pretty okay life. You know, you're not like dealing with drug dealers all the time and、um, going into you know crime bosses'、uh, houses and stuff.、Um, and and like you know the way they portray it in movies. I don't know if all of that is true. So that's what makes me more interested in that kind of world. Of like, okay, what is that world really like? Yeah, and that's I think that's why in some of my movies I really go into this underbelly and and really kind of explore the psyche of somebody who's you know at the edge, and and、um, what what they'll do to you know make a buck. Did anyone try to talk you out of it and say, hey Byron, can you just make? Why don't you make like a, a love story that's where two people are in college, not where. One is, you know, got an underground gambling ring or something. You know, <laughs>、um, no, nobody actually really tried to talk me out of it. I, I feel like I really didn't have that many、um, mentors in the film industry. So, you know, even at my film school, which I wouldn't even call film school,、um, like. It was very theoretical. Like they just made us watch a bunch of old European movies, and we wrote some papers about it. But there was never, yeah, there was never really much guidance in terms of okay, this is how you you know make a living in the film business. This is what you have to do. These are the types of you know jobs you can get. There was really none of that. Well, I've heard that about other film programs, and that you know you're you're learning film theory and you know just certain criticism and and. Uh, maybe camera styles, but but there's maybe not always real world.、Uh, may, maybe that's changed. I don't know. I haven't gone to film school, so I, I don't know how that is. But I, that's something I've heard about other film schools as well. But it sounds like you you like to kind of be 
the man on the street a little bit and, and really be amongst the people and and um, yeah. and kind of feel what it's like to, you know, if you've ever gone to the metro station in L.A., you know, you can feel sort of the heartbeat of L.A. just being yeah. around. Different yeah, I, I like to get out there and wander around and talk to different characters, different people. I think ever since I was a kid, um, you know, I was free to go out and do whatever, hang out with people. Um, so there was never like, because I know some people when they're growing up, they're sheltered or like their parents are very strict. Like for me, you know, I grew up with a single mom. Um, she was dealing with her own issues. So there was never, you know, like I was free to go out at any time of the day or night. Um, and, and I did that with my friends. And, and a lot of my friends were kind of in the same situation, you know. We would just like sneak out at night and go to parties or hang out wherever. Um, and I think that kind of feeling of I want to get out and explore and meet different people um, carried over, you know, even in my 20s, even in college and after. Um, there's always a part of me that want to get out. And I think that might be reflected in some of my movies and the themes of like somebody feeling trapped trying to get out. Um, I don't know exactly where that comes from, but you know, you could probably do a psychoanalysis. That's interesting because you said with Bang Bang, and forgive me, I haven't seen it, but that one is from sort of a, a bourgeois world and one is from sort of a working class world and both are trying to get out almost. Yeah, yeah, they're trying to cross over into each other's worlds. Right. I mean, each one has a trap, you know, yeah. bourgeois, you got to keep up appearances and make sure everybody thinks everything is good. And then the working class is, you know, the monthly rent, food bills and, and other things that come with being poor. And yep. Why is genre so important to you? Well, now I understand why genre is so important is because if you don't have a, a genre that you're fitting your movie into, then you're not going to be able to sell that movie. So you have to understand the genre that you're working in um, if you want, I guess, to appeal to um, your audience. So with uh, Las Vegas Story, there wasn't enough of a genre or, or you said that distributors didn't want it because they felt there wasn't a quote-unquote star? Yeah, so with Las Vegas Story, ultimately it's a drama. It's a family drama, although, you know, maybe from the trailer or whatnot, you might think, okay, there's like some crime elements or it's like a thriller. But if you actually watch the movie, it's really a family drama. It's about this woman and her family. And she's, um, you know, just trying to get by, trying to support her, um, her family. And there's some friends that come into her life. But it really is just a drama. And what the distributors told me was, hey, dramas are really hard to sell unless you have um, a star in there. Um, and, and although I had Eric Roberts, he wasn't really a bankable star. And that has to do with, you know, he's in a bunch of like indie movies. He, he does uh, tons of movies like year round. He's constantly working. So what happens is, you know, as a distributor, you have, you know, so-and-so movies coming to you and like five of them have Eric Roberts. Why would you take a sixth movie that has Eric Roberts and nobody else, right? Like you can have him, but some other stars in there too. But if you just have him, they're like, yeah, we have five movies with him already in it. Like, what else? Why would I take your movie? Hmm. Interesting. I mean, I enjoy watching Eric Roberts. I loved him in Star 80. I don't know. Did you see that? The Dorothy Stratton story? I don't know. Okay, yeah. That's going a few years back, but, you know, he... I think he'd be enough of a draw for me to see it. But, yeah, I understand. I guess maybe if there's so much content out there with one person. Yeah. Which genre have you had the most success with? Success. I don't know if I really have found much success with any of the movies. Um, I would say, I mean, honestly, I feel like my first movie probably, I mean, it definitely made the most money. Um, so gangster drama would definitely be it. Um, and, I, and I think a big part of that was there was really no movie like that. I mean, there were a couple of things out there, but um, I think my movie was one of the newer ones at that point to really portray the Asian gang lifestyle in a realistic way. And and I had this lead actor, who his name is Tai Viet G, and he was like a, a rapper from the 90s. He was like the first rapper who went viral before <laughs> 
YouTube or anything. Like people were passing his um, MP3 around on like, you know, discs on uh, DVDs or whatever. Um, so he had a fan base already, and that's what kind of drew him in, uh, drew his fans into the movie. And then, yeah, I think I really hit like a niche audience with that because a lot of people, I mean, there were people buying the DVD from Australia or um, Ireland, like of all, like, you know, Holland, all sorts of places from all around the world. And they were just like, they're all, you know, Vietnamese or Asian um, young kids who are like, oh, I have to get this movie because like, this is my life or, you know, I've never seen anything like this. Yeah. Or, or the, the wealthy kids that sort of want to, they, they feel at home in that family, even though maybe that's yeah. not what they yeah. Actually, yeah, there was a few kids where they're like, that kid, Charlie, that, that's like me when I was in high school. <laughs> so there was a lot of people that related to it, you know. And how did you meet the rapper? I just found him online. Um, you know, I had known about him. You know, I used to listen to his music in high school. And um, I just reached out to him through an email that I found. And where did he grow up? Uh, he's originally from Portland, Oregon. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. interesting. And so then you you made him an offer and he... Yeah, um, I told him about the movie idea. I sent him the script and then he came out to San Diego and we, you know, had lunch and I told him like what I wanted to do. And he was like, all right, yeah, he was, he was down to do it, you know. And do you think he was a huge draw for the film? Oh yeah, definitely. I think that was, you know, uh, everybody who grew up during the 90s like knew about him. And so for for them to see him in the first movie role, um, like I would have paid to watch that movie. And that's kind of how I approached the movie, you know. I was like, what would I want to watch? Um, and yeah, that's kind of how I did it. Why not stick with one genre and just build your career with that? Be known as the guy that does blank he just keeps making great films in that one genre i mean some people can do it uh, if they can do it they should do it um that's what i've heard from people that you just stick to your lane and you know be known as the guy who does the horror movies in whatever way right um, but for me personally like it's hard for me to kind of put myself in a box like that because like when I think of an idea and I get stuck on an idea, like that idea will lend itself into what genre it's supposed to be, right? Um, and also sometimes I, like if I've already written um, a horror movie, like it's hard for me to write another horror movie because I might be inspired to write another kind of movie. Um, but that's just me, like I've tried to do that where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna write horror movies only because you know, that's what sells. So I did, I wrote like two horror movies. And after that, somehow I started writing um, a science fiction movie. So yeah, it's hard for me to stick to one genre. So just like you said earlier, you like to kind of wander and be free. It sounds like in your creativity, it's the same way. Yeah, yeah, it's a great way to put it. Okay, so you don't want to be, you know, boxed in by. Yeah. Right. You could do a movie about a filmmaker who's trapped in one genre. <laughs> And they can't get out. And they... How much do you think it hurts a filmmaker to not stay in one genre? To not stay in one genre? I don't... So I, I know I've heard this from, you know, professionals and, and whoever. But I don't know if that's really true. And it's definitely not true for, um, for everyone. Because I know of a writer, um, a friend of mine, who, you know, she wrote a horror script and then she wrote a comedy and she got staffed on a show because that show was a horror but with a little bit of a comedic kind of thing in it so when she showed them both of those scripts she got staffed now a lot of you know writing coaches or whoever will tell you oh just stick to your genre right you know like first write one thing and then when you get big you can like branch off. But you know, for this girl, that wasn't the case. And if she didn't have that comedy script ready to go, then she wouldn't have gotten that job. 